Well, we'll get started. I don't see any public here to make public comment. Um, I don't really know if there's any point in waiting my obligatory 30 seconds <laughs> to see if anyone appears out of the woodwork, but I think um, it's safe to say no public comment. So we can move to the consent agenda, which is to approve our minutes. And it turns out that we have quite a few sets of minutes to approve because we had a couple smaller meetings that, that happened. So we have Jan meeting uh, minutes from January 8th, January 12th, January 15th, and January 19th. Um, were, did, that, did those come through for everybody? Okay. There was one question I had, um, Will, on the minutes. Yes. For, I think it was the, was it the 8th or the 12th where you and Mia met with um, Sue and Keisha? I think just, that was the 8th. Just Sue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't believe I was there. Oh. No, yeah, Emma was not there. <laughs> okay. I marked you as being there. Um, I was in like, I'm <laughs> way more active than I realize that I am. <laughs> so I think um, I would be happy to make a motion to approve the minutes with that change made. Could, I have another, well, I guess I could make it an amendment. <clears throat> but before we get a second, I wanted to offer, um, Jim Murphy keeps getting listed as absent, but in effect, the school board basically voted that he's no longer on the committee, I think. Ah. So he, we don't have to count him as absent. I don't want him to get, you know, docked <laughs> for not showing up when we aren't expecting him to. Okay. Yeah, Mia, I actually texted Jim today to ask him to clarify, because I can't remember exactly what the, if he was removed from the committee, if it was, or if it was just that he was like reducing his activity level in the committee. Well, we did vote as a school board to get the committee, the school board representation onto this committee down to two okay. positions. Okay. Good, good, good. I will <coughs> stop. But, I'm absent. And also Tony Fakos, um, I don't know if he, I haven't looked at that part of the minutes. <laughs> I th think I knew to leave but, him. So yeah, he, I don't see him. He was, he dropped off of the committee and then we haven't appointed, um, officially appointed anyone to, to take his seat yet. Right. The board, the board hasn't. Okay. Yeah, luckily I, I don't have him listed among okay. expected names. Okay, so I make a motion to approve those minutes um, with the changes that Mia and I just discussed. I'll second. Okay. Um, Edie, you're first on my list. <laughs> Hi. Zach. Hi. Will. Hi. Mia. Hi. Catherine. Hi. Susan. Hi. Eliana. Hi. Okay, I think that's everyone, right? People keep moving around. I don't know why this happens, but in my list of people gets reshuffled. Um, okay, so an overview of tonight's agenda. Um, basically, we're using this time to prep for the February 3rd school board presentation. And um, I just want to make, you know, I have to admit that I've also had a long day and I've been, you know, trying to wrap my head around what this presentation will look like and um, kind of struggling with, with that a little bit. I did talk to a few of you outside of the committee just to get ideas and we, we circulated that survey. So we got some ideas there. Um, and basically what where what I boiled it down to, and this is this is up for debate. And if there's other aspects that we feel um, are needed for the presentation or desired for the presentation, feel free. This is not set in stone, but um, the my preliminary recommendation, based on the conversations and the survey feedback, 
is to do more work on the core values that we started. I mean, we've kind of been touching on that all along, but we really did that activity with, with um, Sue and Keisha at our last meeting with them. And uh, just sort of firm those up and narrow them down to a handful of them um, and, and put them into a format that will be good to present to the board. And then writing an executive summary. So sort of an overview of what we've done and um, and then at the on the second page of the executive summary, or I don't know how the pages will be, or if it will be part of a PowerPoint, but um, we'll we'll attach the SRO recommendations document that we've been working on. And uh, Mia and I talked about for each um, recommendation that we're making, if we could also tag um, sort of key evidence or pieces of information that we would want the board to reference to sort of support those conclusions that we drew in, in that document. So if we have an executive summary and an overview of the core values that we want the board to keep in mind when making this decision, um, and then the SRO recommendations with key documents linked. Um, there were other ideas that have been thrown out there that I really like, like, and, and I, and maybe um, Eliana, maybe you can speak to the, I liked your idea of going through um, the documents and linking or, and then Will talked about maybe color coding, but like linking the stuff that we come up with to the core values as uh, in addition to the SRO recommendations. So I'm not sure exactly what that looks like or how to organize it in a way that makes sense um, to the board. But that was an idea that um, came up. And then another thing that's sort of lingering out there is um, either people's personal um, statement, you know, like position statement on the SRO decision that the board is going to make. So here's you know, here's what the what the committee has done. Here's what we're presenting to you. And then, as an aside, sort of individual committee members could write letters or make position statements to the board as to like what you think that the board should, um, how you think board members should vote one way or the other, and why. And then another idea was brought up in the survey that we passed out of perhaps making it more of a, you know, we the undersigned after completing the work of the committee, now believe, you know, blah, blah, blah. The, the thing that Sue and Keisha were worried about if we write some sort of statement that committee members sign, not to say that it can't be done, but, um, but Sue and Keisha were sort of steering us away from that as a way to spare each of you as an individual of having to like put your personal statement out there to the public if you don't feel comfortable with that. So, and, and also just like, Sue and Keisha also talked about like um, preserving sort of the relationships of the people that are serving on this committee and not having the unintended consequence of like pitting people against each other for the second half of our committee charge, which is to make recommendations of how the school should move forward. Um, in light of the SRO decision. So um, I'd like to hear people's thoughts on that, sort of the organization of, of the presentation, the materials that I've talked about, um, the agenda that I've laid out, and then we can either add stuff to the agenda or you know, change um, how much time is spent on each thing. I also think uh, Mia had brought up a really good idea about a lot of this work can happen outside of tonight's meeting. So as long as we all sort of agree and come to, you know, come to a common understanding of what the presentation materials will look like, we can then break up into smaller groups. And it could be, if it was, if you were just working with one other person, you could do that outside of a publicly warned meeting. But I'm also happy to arrange for, you know, let's say there was like three working groups that were working on different parts of the presentation. I could um, warn three separate public meetings, you know, Zoom meetings for those, for that to happen in a public way. Um, and that way that would give you more time outside of the meeting. You know, things like linking core evidence to each individual, you know, um, 
SRO recommendation or or color coding a document a document like our feedback document. I think that's going to be really time consuming and probably won't be functional for us to accomplish in tonight's meeting. So there are certain things that probably will just have to happen outside of the meeting. I also think writing the executive summary, I think it would be great to like nominate, you know, two people to work on that executive summary. And we could tonight come up with notes and ideas and things that we want to make sure are in there. And then the people who are the real writers in the bunch, um, you know, and have a passion for that could uh, take that and work on it outside of the meeting. So I'm going to stop talking and just open it up to y'all and see what your thoughts are. You can do the um, raise hand function, but since there's so few of us too, you can just like raise your hand in, on the screen and I'll try to be fair about who gets airtime. Susan. Well, I've been thinking a little bit about like the personal stance part of it or, and like speaking as a lone voice or even speaking as a group. And I'm not sure that's why we're actually here. So like we're here as a as a group to gather and share information. So I'm almost feeling like it's important to keep our personal opinion to the side right now because we're we're the information we're presenting, the power of it comes from the work that we've done as a group. So I've just been kind of thinking about that a little bit. Edie? I would agree with Susan. I also think that it's much less about our own personal opinions or recommendations at this stage. Um, but I also think that this may be an inaccurate perception, but I feel like the people on this committee are at a place with each other where sharing our viewpoints in a non-confrontational way wouldn't really drive a wedge between us. Um, I agree with that. Will? Just more agreement. I'm, I'm mulling over. Um, I mean, I find I find both of those points very convincing, and that, and I think that's a better reason. I think Susan's point that there's rhetorical strength in the work, and in the research, and in what we've discovered that stands on its own, that isn't necessarily added to or detracted from anyone's individual conviction. That there's. It, that it's it's bigger than any of us. I will say I made a short sort of presentation to the board at our last meeting and let them know that this was our plan, that we probably wouldn't be coming with like a you know, 10 of us voted this way and four of us voted this way. And so that's our recommendation. Um, and I didn't get too many, you know, people didn't really push back on that. It seemed like people understood. Um, I can't figure out the race hand function. Race, I'm glad you're just- Apparently all technology has lost me. Um, so I think, I think I mostly agree with what has been said. I feel like sometimes, I mean, maybe not with our like recommendation to the board, but I feel like sometimes disagreement can foster like understanding or like even learning or like acknowledgement or acceptance of other people's opinions that can sometimes be really helpful for like community building versus like trying to avoid slash like not talking about personal opinions. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate that point. 
Yeah, and I don't, you know, I'm not in a position and, you know, all of you, of course, are are free to share your personal opinion. I, I just want to make, I just want to see if there's some way that we want to, if we do want to sort of move in the direction of doing a, we the undersigned feel this way about it, or if we just want to like leave it up to individual committee members um, to make a, a personal decision about whether they want to email the board or make public comment as an individual. Mia, I see that you unmuted. Would you like to speak? Um, I was just, uh, I'm, one, I just want to say thank you to Edie and Zach for those points. And I'm really um, at the risk of sounding like an old cynical person, just really encouraged to hear the two of you leaning into disagreement as discourse. Um, so anyway, thank you for, for making those points. And I feel like that that ethos will really serve us well as a committee and a team in this what, when we start to um, focus on the second part, part of our charge, because I imagine that we will have lots of space for disagreement about what safety and um, and well-being look like within this broader vision, like the the actual how we break it down into like real recommendations that we give to the to the board. And I I guess the the um, the question that I'm holding is I I definitely see what Susan is talking about and and others have voiced about how the work uh, that we've done as a team is really very powerful. And I guess I just wouldn't want anyone at this stage in the game to feel like they um, are silenced in any way from from stating something about like, well, as <clears throat> as an individual who has fully participated in the process as a committee member up until this point, I just want to say these are the things. This is how all of this has landed with me, and I I could see there being room for somebody being able to say something like that without it diminishing the the power of the the work that we've done as a committee um so I, and then i have other questions about the like other ways of the the presentation but i if we want to stay on this point i'd be happy to just hold that until so it, it sounded like it looked like Catherine wanted to share something oh i was just going to say that i like the idea of a consensus you know, coming together and having something that we all agree on, presenting that to the board. Um, so there are a lot of people missing tonight. Is everybody on the committee part? I mean, I don't understand why so many are missing. And like, how do we go forward if we're gonna come, you know, are we gonna send this out and let everybody kind of weigh in on it? We have less than a week. So that kind of concerns me. Yeah, I mean, so who is, how many people are missing? So Joan is missing because she can't attend and she won't be able to attend um, the February 3rd meeting either. But she did say that she would be willing to like make a recording or, you know, she's eager, she wants to be a part of the work, but um, just has a conflict of the, those dates. Um, Pierre, I haven't heard from Pierre and I was planning on reaching out to him after tonight just because I haven't seen him at a couple of meetings and I haven't heard from him. So um, I'm not sure, you know, if he is just running into conflict. And Jay told me he was going to be 15 minutes late, so he'll be here. Um, and who else? I was thinking about Amanda from the high school. Oh, yep. Amanda did email me actually, now that you mention it. <laughs> also Jen. And Jen, yeah. So it sounds like there's just too many people not here tonight to come to any of consensus tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I do one, think, yeah, go ahead. One thing that stands out to me is that we, the other than the naming like further defining values it feels like tonight we weren't really going to do much decision making it feels like we landed a lot last week so not to say that their contributions wouldn't be very useful if they were here tonight i just i 
it um it strikes me that we're not they those that have participated up until this tonight i i really do yeah from my opinion see that they have contributed to what we would be sharing with the board mm. <clears throat> yeah i'm just talking about that we the undersigned feel this way oh yeah yeah of course like i don't think we can do that if that that many people are missing so very good point Maybe we should just, um, I mean, does everyone feel comfortable? Do I need to take a vote? Does everyone feel comfortable with like, just if you want to make a personal statement to the, to the board, um, you can do that either in the form of an email to the, all the board members or during public comment before our presentation? Or do we think there's that we should carve out time during our presentation for individuals to speak as individuals? Okay. I think that people can make their voices heard outside of the, that meeting. Yeah. So if it's not like with what, <laughs> what we're going to present, I guess. Right. Like, here's what the committee is presenting, but I want to make sure that I pull this piece out and highlight it for you as an individual committee member, something like that. Okay. So does everyone feel pretty good about that plan? not we're not as a committee we're not taking a position one way or the other and won't be presenting something of like we the undersigned feel this way i do i like your idea catherine of you know i think it would be great if there was some consensus um but if it does feel like maybe just with the time restriction it might not be able to happen It, does it feel like in the phase two, we're going to have more time for, for that? Because that's kind of how it feels to me. We're going to have more time to kind of get messy and explore that and, and maybe reach consensus or maybe not. But it feels like that's what we're going to be spending time on in the second part. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So what about, so let's move on to the other pieces oh, of the present. I just saw, I just saw Eliana had her hand up. So, so for the executive summary part, like, I feel like that could just be, instead of having it be a position that we're leaning towards, is because that's what it sounds like it's trying to be right now. I feel like instead, it could just be a summary of what we found, like both sides, because I feel like that's what the whole point of the committee was. It's just like, it's not a recommendation. It's just a presentation of like varying things like qualities on both sides. So like, I feel like whoever writes the summary can just acknowledge like both sides like equally because and then and then individuals can do whatever they want because like they're just speaking from themselves so I'm not sure if I totally understood what the point of the summary was like if it's to lean one way or the other but like I'm seeing it as not that way at all it's just like everything just in like a chunk. Yeah, I see it that way too, Eliana. I see it as more of like an easy like one page read for the board members to sort of for us to explain what we've done as a committee and and the two the core value maybe the core values and the SRO recommendation sort of an ex explanation of that before they are looking at it. But we can discuss what the executive summary should be also like it doesn't have to be how I envision it. I was picturing it more just how Eliana just described it, where it's, it is the summary of the body of work that we've put together. And then from there, um, we have the links to more detailed information for the board members who wanna do a deeper dive. Um, just to clarify, so I make, make sure I have everything right. Um, that would be we would leave um, for our presentation to the board, still like keep keeping public comment if we have something we want to share or just avoiding in general, like picking a specific whatever. I would picture it as avoiding taking a personal stance during the committee presentation time that's on the agenda. And if and that I would welcome you to, I mean, 
all people should be participating in the process. And so if you, as an individual committee member, would like to express your personal opinions to the board, then the appropriate way to do that would be through either a letter slash email to the board or during public comment before, at, at the time that's allotted for public comment before the meeting starts. And then I think once we're in the meeting as part as the committee, we should sort of stay true to what we've talked about here and not and not go off on tangents of people's personal opinions. I do think there will be question and answer time where the board members will pose questions to us as a committee. And there's a possibility that during that time, you know, it might be hard to avoid <laughs> hinting at your personal opinions. I mean, and I think that's okay. <laughs> I was at a uh, professional development today for math, and um, I was really inspired by the way that the information was presented because th they started with one core slide, which was basically Maslow's hierarchy, and um, talking about the needs of students, right? And so I was thinking that it might behoove us to come up with one really good graphic to start off with, like maybe a representation of our core values. And we can kind of link that in multiple places so people can be accessing it on their devices. And so then later when we're using our executive statement or something, we have this like graphic to come back to, like these are the core, you know, this is what we've learned about Montpelier School District. These are the core values. And then we sort of have something really tangible to keep referring back to. Um, so I was just thinking about that today. And I, I don't want to get us off track if we're <laughs> talking about something else next, but it was really feeling like that could be really useful to have something sort of simple, um, but really recognizable and useful. I like that idea. I think we will have time to talk about sort of what the visuals are going to look like. And then maybe that's something that we can do is breakout in part of breakout groups um, outside of the meeting time. If there's somebody that's particularly um, great at coming up with graphics, <laughs> then we could uh, sort of put those people together to get on that. Um, I want to make sure that I give enough time for, you know, the other ideas like the color coding or, or Eliana, your idea of like sort of linking. I, I wanted to honor that idea because I think it was really great linking the core values to the feedback that we received. Um, or the question and answer document? And how would you picture doing that? How, how would you picture the end result looking? Um, I honestly haven't thought about it too much, but like if, if we wanted to make um, like a doc um, that everyone could access and like actually just link it in and um, like just pull out maybe two two like direct quotes from people in the community um, and like assign them to different values. I think that would be um, really good. And yeah, and that like totally goes along with what Susan was saying because then they can just have that like graphic right in front of them and just always be able to relate back to it um, throughout the presentation. And it kind of helps us like stay on track too. So we're not just like, going off and rambling like we're just like oh yeah this, these are our values and everything I say well not that harsh but like it'll all come back to this but yeah um I was gonna like plan that out more in the next few days leading up to the meeting that sounds great um okay and is there any so the core values and maybe sort of uh, pulling quotes from the feedback to put with the core values. Um, the executive summary as sort of an overview of our committee work and our findings. And then the SRO recommendations um, with uh, key supporting documents under each recommendation. Um, and then I think, you know, the raw files too that we have for all of those things. Is there anything else that 
any of you are thinking about right now that should be presented to the board outside of what I just listed? Um, would it be helpful to like, so we had that presentation um, that a few people went to last week. It would it be helpful to pull out like key information from that or link that presentation in somehow because or because I think that's really helpful in, in our next phase of the charge. Um, and also just like for the committee to see if it wanted to persuade them one way or the other. We have a just like a resource page to give to the board because I'm assuming they're not going to make a decision on the third, correct? They're going to take all this into advisement and. I actually it. suspect that they might make a decision on the third. I'm not positive about that. And, you know, board meetings tend to have a life of their own and evolve in the moment. <laughs> so, but I think um, usually what happens is that we would send them all of our information ahead of time. So they would have a board packet with all of that information about a week prior to the meeting. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes board members do a little bit of work, like making phone calls and asking questions if they have any um, prior to the board meeting. And then I think after the presentation, I suspect people will be ready to make a decision, but it might not go that way. But um, yes, we did. I did start um, with make, creating a document of all of our listed resources that we've come into contact with. I mean, a lot of them are linked as sort of supporting documents under that Q&A. Um, spreadsheet, but it's kind of hard to find. It's not the most user-friendly document. So um, I've, we've started to pull, Mia and I have started to pull and like put it in a Word document. So that is, I think that's a great suggestion, Catherine, is like cleaning that document up and, and making it, formatting it into a way that's really user-friendly for the board. Any other suggestions of things that should be part of our presentation. My thoughts are more process than contents. And I, and just working out in my head how, how to do each of these stages. And it, it'll be, and I think this is glancing at the rest of the agenda, I think this is already the plan, but it'll be much easier to attach these supporting documents in easily and quickly communicable ways um, to, to the summary and the core values once they exist. Um, so once, um, yeah, once we have a, at least a rough draft of both of those things. Um, and then I imagine that the process of um, linking the evidence or, or summarizing and cleaning up the research um, will also have an effect of helping us revise the summaries um, when we notice what's missing. So. Yeah, I've been thinking a little bit like that as well, Will. And I was, you know, we don't, I know we're probably gonna to wanna to use some slides, but we don't want too much on our slides, right? Because then people just don't read anything. <laughs> so to be thinking about how to make our points really well and then offer information in other ways, but there may be board members who haven't had a lot of time to ponder this and they're they, you know, they're, they've got their packet, but they're trying to process a lot that very night. So I, I, I'm with you on sort of, it's going to be pretty important how the presentation looks. Um, I'm just wondering how we're going to decide who's like in charge of that. Like, are we going to have certain people that are like, like two people working together on the visual, like how, like logistically, how should we plan out this processing of what it's going to look like and Stuff like that. So we have um, later on in our agenda, we have work groups presentation planning. So let's let's save most of this for for that. I, I'm glad that everyone it's like you're thinking about it. It's on your mind, because I think what Will said about 
as it unfolds and sort of comes to life, I think we're going to have a better a better vantage point to say, okay, who should present this and how. So let's um let's get into the agenda. I do want to. I I think I just sort of like blanked out on Eliana. You had said about having um Mary and Lara's presentation as part of our um, committee work. And I will just tell you that behind the scenes, I know that Lara and Mary are asking for time on the agenda to present um, their their presentation or some abridged version of it. Oh, and the board so, meeting agenda. February For February 3rd. So I'm not sure, I mean, I would actually like to hear people's thoughts really quickly about whether they think it makes sense to have Lara and Mary you know, there would not be enough time for them to do what they did for us the other night. But if, you know, do we, do we as a committee really want, you know, to carve out like five minutes, 10 minutes for Laura and Mary or do, or does it make sense? Like sort of the, the idea being that, you know, either they do it as part of the agenda or they do it as part of public comment. I know they want to be a part, they want to um, have their voices heard and have that presentation seen. So is it the same as what was last week or is it an additional stuff? It would be the same information, but they would have to pare it down because there would not be 25 minutes available to them. So I'm not sure what it would end up looking like after they revised it or, or narrowed it down. My initial would, thought is oh. to say, public comment, but. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I initially thought public comment too, but I also wouldn't want to like take away from other people who have been like going to the school board a lot and have like personal experiences to share. Like um, I think their presentation was awesome. And if there was a way to include it in our time, that would be good. But they also said that they are both like, I don't know, they're both like white women that are just coming to this realization that like we need to transform everything. And I just like would want to keep the space for people that are actually like dealing with this stuff. And like, I don't know, because I just have watched the, the previous public comment and it's really powerful and it's like really essential because they're like, their kids are actually dealing with police. So I don't know, I just wanted to make sure that they have that time as well. Yeah, great point. Um, I, I mean, their presentation will be part of our resource document also. And if we want to try to figure out tonight a way to put it in, you know, we're going to do work on that SRO recommendation document. So if we want to take pull key pieces of information from their presentation, we can fold it into our presentation. You know, it was presented to us as part of a committee meeting. So now it becomes part of our work. Um, so I think that's where I'll leave it with them. That's what I was thinking too. Sorry. <laughs> There's overlap as well. I mean, they're pulling on some of the same resources and bits of research that we've already read as well. So it's, um, yep. yeah, it should be easy enough to fold in. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry, Mia, I went over time <laughs> and, uh, but I think we can shave down time from other parts of this, especially that our breakout rooms are going to be pretty small. <laughs> um, right. Oh, and you, yeah. Thank you, Emma. And one thing I forgot to ask you to do when I shared the um, the doc where we'll be taking notes for the core values is to ask you, Emma, if you could share it with all committee members, because I don't have everybody's email addresses. So, yeah. so is that in, I'm sorry, I'm a little behind in my inbox. Is it in my, did you email it to me? Yep. It's called Articulating Core Values. And if you could make everybody an editor of it, then they can take notes. So while Emma's doing that, um, I'll just give a quick overview of what we're doing with this piece of the agenda. So, we're defining what these core values mean. So we're picking up where we left off in our last meeting with Sue and Keisha, where we had broken out into small groups. We had actually written them down first to ourselves. Each of us named three to four values that came up 
um, for ourselves when we're thinking about um, safety. And then we broke into small groups and we talked those through together with our partners in our small groups and brought them back to the big group. Sue and Keisha in that part of the exercise, we're also doing a little bit of grouping of ones that seemed um, similar as people were saying them. Um, so what I've done is actually gone ahead and continued that grouping to, for ones that seem most connected to each other. And so now when we break out into small groups, um, and some of these will be a single person, <laughs> that small of a group, uh, we our, our job here is to articulate what that value grouping means to us. And maybe that also means like you actually eliminate a few of the words because you feel like some of them are just really repetitive. But at the end, and at the end of the day, what we'll do, or at the end of the day, at the end of the um, little mini breakouts we'll do is you'll have one or two sentences that would help anybody who's been kind of outside of this process be able to picture clearly what that value looks like. Um, so for example, we've grouped together the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion, justice, and anti-racist. So those are all one value grouping. The person who's been tasked with um, articulating out what that looks like will have one or two sentences that sort of define those, that that set of values. Um, and maybe what you say is actually, I, this all feels like overlap and I just wanna go with anti-racist and that's the value that we, that we hold. Um, and this is what that looks like to me. Um, and then when we come back from our small groups, we'll take a few minutes to read them out loud to each other. And then we'll actually re-randomize ourselves and, some, and you will get someone, another set of values and um, uh, kind of look at the sentence that the previous person wrote and say, oh, what do I feel like, like how, how well does that stick for me? Is the, does it feel like there's anything missing or um, do we, is there more that I could add to this or how it might this be able to be refined in some way? So at the end of this, we'll have done two rounds of small groups, but the first one is you'll get assigned to a set of values and then, um, do your best to, to define it. Let me pause there just to see if folks, if it's like there's an understanding of what we're about to do. The one question Mia I have is that, um, so we're just writing our own definition or, or like what we believe the committee or like, where are we drawing the sentence from? I would say what it means to you. Um, yeah, and certainly that will be influenced by conversations that we've had as a committee and you know the, all the things that you've read in all of our research. But yeah, I would say what it means to you. Emma, I think you made me co-host so that I can do the breakout groups, but I still can't do the breakout, breakout groups. Okay, so how do you want the breakout groups? I see I'm kind of, I was only half listening to you because I was busy getting the document ready. Um, yeah. There are six, seven groups. Six, six groups. The, the intent was for the sixth group to do both um, student voice and physical safety because those two seem fairly straightforward. Um, but there are, I, I was trying, I was imagining it that at least two committee members would be in each group, but obviously that's not going to be the case today because we're a small group. So why don't we just go ahead and say seven? There are nine of us committee members here. So we can do four groups with two to three people in them. And so then we would group a, a couple of these again. So why don't we say group three? covers both diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the transparency. No, wait, one sec, everybody. Does, so four groups sounds good to you though, right? Sure, go for that. We'll see how far we get. Okay. We're and then doing a little gonna... bit of adjustment on the fly. It's all good.
Okay. The tyranny of the breakout room closure. Right? <laughs> too much. It's too much. Oh, Do you want me to work on rearranging breakout rooms right now, Mia? Sure. Um, the the task we were going to tackle next was to just read out loud to each other just to just to reground in coming together as a group before we break out again, um, just what we've shared or what we've come up with. Um, I don't think we need a ton of context or um, uh, whatnot, but if you're feeling like it would be really, really useful, then please do add to what is written here. But mostly this is just to kind of report how far we got. Um, so who was in breakout room one? Who would like to Hi. share? I can do that. Thanks, Evie. Um, we basically we wrote two sentences technically, but they're pretty much variants on the same sentence. We just used slightly different wording. Um, just I guess we were we wanted to come at it from different angles, but also both of us took the PSAT this morning and our brains are kind of fried. Oh man. Um, so our first sentence was take into consideration individual feedback or ideas in order to have a nuanced approach to system-wide standards. And our second one was account for individual experience when, when examining systemic standards. Thank you. And group two. Uh, I could do the first one. Uh, we had a holistic trauma-informed approach to conflict, conflict resolution that strengthens individual and community well-being. And the second definition we came up with is not what's on the sheet, but Will had a pretty good idea. Yep. Typing, 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 and pasting into the sheet. Um, okay. I was trying to find a good way to phrase the work. Um, regardless of whose work it is. And I ended up with the responsibility is traditionally managed by the SRO requires significant relationship building and should be conducted with transparency and work toward an ideal of restorative justice. Um, and I think that touches on each of the words in the above, though I didn't actually restate them, but if anyone. I kind of thought that yeah. the relationship building piece also had to do with like the school environment itself, like regardless of the SRO, like it's administration, it's faculty, students, mm -hmm. but yes, that piece is also important. Um, yeah. Maybe I can, yeah, I can take that out. And that's right. We were talking about getting the, yes. And that's Staff. the re students this is, this is exactly why we're going to do another round of these because this is we um this is the opportunity to continue just to play with it and get it to like as clear of a clear and comprehensive a definition as as we can um speaking of that moving on to group three uh i was part of group three and we actually were only able to tackle one of our two <laughs> so one more reason why it's good we're doing another round of breakout groups um <clears throat> to address and and demonstrate gentleness, compassion, nonviolence, empathy, and acceptance. What we came up with is that we care for one another, take care of each other. We are community first. We seek to see and understand each other's perspectives. And we work through our initial reactions in order to see the humanity in others. I love the we in there. That's really strong. Oh, thanks, Eliana. Thanks, Mia. And then group four. So Catherine and I worked on this one together and uh, we got a little panicky. So we finished the first part, but the second part, we, we got a little panicky, so it's not quite finished. Um, Catherine, do you want to talk about student voice and student centered? Um. I'll uh, just read what we came up with. We said Montpelier Roxbury Public School System is a student-centered learning community which values student voice by encouraging student participation 
and decision making offers opportunities for students to engage in collaboration. We may have said student mm. too many times, I don't know. Um, And then I'll yeah, jump. we kind of tried to define what what it looked like to have, you know, what ha, what opportunities to include student voice and what does it mean to be student centered. So awesome. And then physical safety, we just said physical safety during the school day or while participating in school activities means no fear of bodily harm or punitive threats or consequences as a result of developmentally appropriate behaviors from fellow students or staff. I think that's probably need to put the end somewhere else to make it clearer. <laughs> but I know a lot of uh, several many times I've seen, you know, disproportionate discipline and consequences for things that are normal behaviors. Mm. So, so mm -hmm. Great. We, were, we were working, we were working towards something about um, people being able to express themselves without being having any fear, but we didn't quite get there. So maybe the next group will do that. <laughs> awesome, good. Excellent notes for the, for the future group four. Thank you. I'm so excited about these. They're really coming together. Um, and I think we'll be able to land them with another round. So Emma, have you got us ready to go in? Oh, you're muted. One thing that I just realized when you said future group four, <laughs> was not only do I need to like sort of mix up the groups and make sure people are with new people, but that they're not in the same group that they were in originally. <laughs> and if you so. can't get it exactly right, that's really, it's okay. There's not, it's not a exact science. Eliana, mm -hmm. did you have a? You I was to? just, um, will these be open to, re to review by the rest of the committee? Like I'm sure they will be, but I just wanted to like make sure. Yeah, yeah, good okay. point. Um, Eliana, were you in group one? first time? No, I was in group two. Okay. And Will, were you in group two the first time? Okay. I'm going to change you then. Okay. Ready? So again, with nine minutes or less? Uh, let's stick with nine. Yeah. I did nine minutes with 60 second warning. Great. So 10 minutes total. We're together again. I think we were just meant yeah. to be together. <laughs> I need more time on this stuff because I'm really like a stickler about wording. So, oh well. I feel like it's really hard to do this in a short time frame. This is something I think we could do outside the meeting, to be honest. But <laughs> um, so. all right, so we're in group two this time. Oh. Oh, there's Emma. Sorry, I realized that I put you two back together again. <laughs> we like working together, so it's it's working out. <laughs> Hold on that momentum, girls. <laughs> All right, so group two. Once pushed to be able to take holistic steps, addressing unique trauma and lived experience holistic health. I do think some of these start to be like overlapping. Because this one, for me, overlaps a little bit with what group three we were working on with gentleness, compassion, nonviolence, empathy, acceptance. It touches on a lot of that, that, those themes for me. Um, like, because if you're being compassionate and empathetic, you're, you're being mindful of people's potential traumas and lived experiences. Right. I almost feel like the piece that seems missing to me is sort of the listening piece, <laughs> like hearing people's stories. Um, because before you can do the holistic next steps, you kind of need to address the trauma, but I, I don't really know how to say that. Didn't we have something in our group agreements that was about like listening for understanding Remember? yeah <laughs> i'm forgetting how it was worded yeah i mean maybe 
maybe we can just kind of add on like a sentence there, like um, listening for understanding is is crucial to under, to hearing people's stories or something like that. Yep, I like that. And I will just make a note in here too. Like link with group three or something like that. That it might be, because it might, we might be looking to pare these down a little bit. Um, understanding and addressing traumas or issues, Catherine. <laughs> we kind of work well together, that's two word smithers. <laughs> Traumas and lived experiences, I think, might work. Because a lot of the times we just don't know, right? We don't know what's going on for kids. Like, we don't know till the explosion happens. <laughs> well, like today, yeah, like Jacob exploded because Julia like did one little thing, you know, and he just, yeah. So what's behind all of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It takes time and trust. Yeah. That's what we were talking about in our last group. I was like, you know, as a teacher, as a human being, you, you, it's easy to get like sort of offended and annoyed and angry when kids like swear or storm out of your classroom or, you know, toss a chair over, or aren't listening or fall asleep or all these things. And it's like, but oftentimes, like my first line of defense is to take them out into the hallway and just be like, what's up with you today? Like, what's going on with you? Are you okay? And when you approach them like that first, instead of like, okay, get out of here. You know, you need to take a walk five minutes, you know, this and that, here's a stop and think, whatever it is, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, um, that when you approach them with like, tell me what's going on, like, what's up with, are you okay today? That usually you get a story. You know, usually there's something going on. Yeah, like they're hungry or something really simple that you can actually kind of fix. Not always, but sometimes. Right. So the, and then the second one we had was the transparency one, right? Emma, I just wanted to mention, did you know that um, there's an ad out to hire an assistant principal at the middle school? What? Oh, yeah. Well, because I'm on the board, I know that Pierre. Okay. So that was posted. So I was thinking that may have something to do with Pierre pulling off of this group, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Pierre stepped up. I mean, my guess is that he just got another job. Me too. <laughs> but like a black male admin, he's probably, they're probably, somebody's poaching him, I think. <laughs> But, and you probably want, you know, he probably wants to be a principal would be my guess. Yeah. So, okay. So I, I thought you probably knew. It's on my radar. I just haven't um, reached out to him about yeah, the, the post. We, we just got the posting, I think a couple days mm -hmm. ago, the posting went out. So. That stinks. Yeah. I'm bummed. I know. We got to figure out how to keep keep people. Yeah, <laughs> principals don't stay long. It's like they have like an average in Vermont. Mm -hmm. It's like two and a half years or something like that. And, and that's part of the problem because you cannot build trust when you have such a turnover. Yeah, you can't have community that way. It's very very hard. It was pretty amazing that Pam Arnold stayed as long as she did at the middle school. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know anybody that stays at the middle school long is just a saint to me. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. middle school in general, anywhere. Just do you guys? Can you think of anything to add to that second one? I think they did a really, really good job <laughs> of summarizing it. 
Yeah, they Maybe do just that. relationship building and trust. I also don't know why the responsibilities of the SRO is in there personally. Like we haven't talked about the SRO in these core values. So I don't, I'm, I would be tempted to make that part go away, but. Right, I agree. It should be more broad. Should we like maybe do highlight like, it? Do like I mean, a strike through. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually know how to do that. Do you know how to do that? I think you do format and then strike through. Oh, good to know. It should be. I don't see it actually on formatting. I, that's what happened to me recently when I went to use it. <laughs> it might be about um, permissions or something. I don't know. You just make a, add a comment maybe. Yeah, I thought I'd just make it a color and say, does this belong here? <laughs> is that okay? Yeah. Just the SRO is included in staff, I guess, maybe in our community. Yeah. That's I definitely think communication is going to be, you know, need is a really important theme when it comes to disciplinary practices at the schools and it is it it does feel like something that we that our district could really improve upon um and i don't know you know i don't have all the answers i don't really know exactly how but it's like i do think there's enough sort of discrepancy um classroom to classroom school to school about what practices there are and i don't think your average guardian um would be able to like tell you, you know, oh, here's what happens when you have an infraction. This is, we all know that. Yeah, yeah. I think the elementary school uses the PBIS, um, Positive Behavior Incentive System. And a lot is coming out now with respect to equity in that system. And maybe, maybe it's not ideal. So there's that whole wormhole as well. Yeah. I don't know. I think like consistency is a big part of that. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's a good point. Thank you for taking notes. Yeah. Catherine. Maybe and training, like making sure everyone has the same. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I don't know about the rest of you, but Eliana and I really had some great stuff to work with. So we were able to even finish a little early. Um, so I think just to wrap this up, we'll um, each read out what we're, where we've landed, and then we can shift on to other parts of the presentation. And um, to Eliana's point, this will definitely be something that we share with um, the folks on the committee who couldn't be here to see if they have any other final like little revisions or whatever, but I'm really excited about where how this is shaping up. Um, Eliana, do you want to share our sentences? We were yeah, group one. Sure. Okay. Um, we set system wide standards based on a broad range of individual perspectives and experiences in order for the standards to fit and work for everyone. When we hold each other accountable to standards, we understand that our individual experiences will affect how we approach meeting the standard. Awesome. Thanks, Eliana. Joan, I just dropped the document that we're working on into the chat again for you. Welcome. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and right now we're closing out this part of the agenda just by reading um, the definitions that we sort of co-created in our small groups um, for each of the values. Um, so who was group two? So Catherine oh, and I have to be together again. <laughs> I'm gonna let Susan talk this time. <laughs> and Emma joined us too. Um, so we, um, we really we built off the first sentence and we just added that um you know listening for understanding 
to, to the stories seemed like a piece that was missing and we wanted to make sure it was included. And then Emma noted that this one seems to overlap a lot with group three, um, the gentleness and compassion group. So if we're going to be doing any blending, this might be a good place to blend. Um, and then the next one we had was the transparency, openness, caring, and inclusion, communication, restorative, relationship building, optimism, and a belief in others. That was a big one. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot to add to that one. We thought that the group before did a really nice job. And we just were wondering if that pink part belonged there, the part of the SRO. It, it felt like maybe we wanted a more global statement, and we, but we didn't want to delete someone else's words. <laughs> so, so that's what we did. I typed that. Delete it with, with. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Awesome. It's funny. I'm sorry. I'm one, I'm getting kind of like really into thinking about and, and hearing what other people are saying. And the other thing is I just keep waiting for Emma to keep facilitating this stuff, part of the meeting. So apologies for the pause. Um, thank you to Susan and Catherine and Emma. This is great. And then uh, let's move on to group three. Zach, do you want to read the first one and I'll do the second one? Um, connection permitting? Yeah, sure. Let me... um, yes. Um, <laughs> so the first one, um, we just kind of tweaked a little bit of the wording that the group before had, um, and we wrote, we, priori we prioritize community, we care for one another, we seek to understand each other's perspectives by working through initial reactions to recognize the humanity in others. And the next one, defining diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, and anti-racism, um, we acknowledge the weight of history, the realities of inherited privilege, and the urgent need to actively embrace anti-racist practices and matters of equity and justice for all members of this community. Yeah. I just feel like, can we get an amen or something? I don't know. It sounds great. Okay, and then closing us out, group four. Thank you, Will and Zach. Um, yeah, I can read the first one and then Jay can read the second one. Sounds good. Okay, um, so our first one was student voice, student centered. Um, and we basically just sort of trimmed it down um, and like tried to replace some of the language with more active language. Um, we said Montpelier Roxbury public school system is a student centered learning community, which values their voice and creates opportunities for participation and decision making. And then the last one around physical safety, and I'll read it um, before I do, um, I do want to point out that Edie and I recognize that uh, uh, her PSAT experience from today hasn't changed at all from when I took them in like 1989. And that's, uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But uh, yes, appreciate Edie being here after such a long day, that's for sure. Um, but around physical safety, we were certainly focused on active language and um, acknowledging how important it was. And so what we, we landed on was every student will have no fear of bodily harm, punitive threats or consequences from fellow students, faculty or staff. Brava. These are so good. I'm like, I'm doing like a little like happy dance in my desk chair here. Cause really we just did a ton of work in like, I don't even like 40 minutes. Way to go everybody. All right, I'm gonna hand it back over to Emma. So I will just say that my little eyes and my other eyes and ears any co-host out there, I think there's three of you, um, just keep an eye on that uh, waiting room because Joan was waiting there while we were in breakout rooms. And I just saw that Catherine got booted for a second and is coming back. So just, it actually has had some action tonight. Um, okay, so the next 
part is to um, discuss the executive summary, what that will look like and finalize the SRO recommendations document. So I think I'd like to start with the SRO recommendations document since it seems like it was something that I emailed out as homework and it seems like a lot of people have been looking at it and thinking about it. So I think that would be an easy place for us to make a lot of progress quickly. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is put us into breakout rooms based on which group you were in originally um, last time we met, and then we can come back and see if it makes sense to go back out to breakout rooms and sort of look at a different section of that document. Um, so let me try to figure this out. So who there were, there are three sections of the document. So I'll do three breakout rooms. And I think um, breakout room number one was that me and Edie and Jay, right? And Joan. So the four of us? Sorry, and Joan. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put. Sorry, this is a little cumbersome. <laughs> and then who was on that second part of the document, the um, considerations to keep the SRO part. I think that was Susan and Zach and me. And Will, were you with us or were you group three? You were group three. So it might have just been the three of us, Susan and Zach. Do you remember anybody else with us? OK. I do not. Yeah. Okay, so, and then who was in that group three? Was Will, right? And I Kat. was also in that group. Sorry, uh, Zach, you were in the third group? No, that was Eliana who just said that. Zach oh. was with Susan and me in group two. Thank you. Okay, so Mia and Susan and Catherine and Zach in group two, Jay and Joan and Edie and I in group one, Will and Eliana in group three. And Catherine, I think. Oh, okay. So Catherine, group three. Emma, I'm wondering if maybe one of us groups that has a co-host in it stays back in this room in case other people Try and join us. I don't know if we're just thinking we don't want. I can just type into the chat <laughs> if if people um, go missing. Yeah, I don't know. It's it will only do could, like let's just do could one could one group just stay in the main room and not be a breakout room. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do that now <laughs> that I've already created the rooms. If I delete one of the rooms, then maybe, I think if I delete one of the rooms, then maybe that group will just stay. So let's try that. Hopefully um, we'll still exist. Okay, and I'm just gonna do six minutes or five minutes. Um, we can always hop right back into them if we feel like we need more time. And our job here is doing a little bit more further refining and yeah, like bringing together what we worked on last time. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I did email that out and I think a lot of people have gone to the document and already started a lot of that refining and I see a bunch of notes and stuff. So I would just ask you to go back to your section and see if you can actually edit the section to be reflective of the notes and um, change it into more of a narrative format than bullet point format. Okay, and then we'll we'll do five minutes, and then we'll see if we need more. I'm just going to point out that the third section is going to be harder to make into a narrative since it's far less cohesive than the first two. Maybe there could just be a narrative introduction of like, here's why we even have this third section. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that, and then it, and then we can keep the bullet points. Does that make sense? Did the second section accidentally bump into the third section? Is that what that's all about? Where it says like third section starts here? 
No, it was because I dropped some section. stuff from the from the first section into the third without permission. Okay. And, and Will just wanted to make sure that I was like called out and dragged for that. <laughs> okay, so that's third section. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay, I'm opening up the rooms and hopefully we're staying behind group one. Looks like it worked. Okay, good. Nice. Oh, I hope everyone has easy access to the document. I didn't put it into the chat before we left. Do you all have? I have it yeah, open. I've got it open. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it looks like most people are on it. Okay, so did everyone have a chance? It looked like, um, so I went in and sort of grouped the bullet points and then made a couple notes. And then I saw that Joan went in and thank you, started on some of the narrative work. Um, should we just start by reading the narrative that Joan wrote? You wanna read it, Joan? Yeah, sure, I'm happy to. Um, so that, yeah, so the first paragraph there tries to sum up the bullets above it. A school resource officer can foster communication and cooperation between the schools in our district and the Montpelier Police Department. They can serve as an added human resource with specialized knowledge as a member of the student support team. MRPS staff have relied on the SRO position for a few key functions. Home visits, especially to homes that a counselor or social worker might feel unsafe visiting on their own. Providing further information on children and their families and facilitating safety drills. It has also been of benefit to school administration to have a direct line of communication to the police department through a single officer with whom the administration has an established relationship. That sounds really good. Uh, one, one thing, I just wasn't totally sure, the bullet that talked about, um, oh, it's the third bullet, in the parentheses says home visits, legal intel on children and their families. I wasn't sure that that how, <laughs> whether that was really something that we needed to or wanted to name in that fashion. Um, so that's why I kind of just generalized it in my paragraph to just further information um, about so, but I don't know if I, that's missing if it's too general. So anyway, that's that. Art. Um, and I guess if it looks fine, do we just delete? Is it okay to delete the bulleted section above then? Is that the goal we're, where we're trying to get to? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, we can all take a quick read through there and make sure if there's nothing that we're missing in that from the bullet points in the paragraph, I think we should go ahead and delete all the bullet points above. Jay, were you about to say something? Oh, um, hold on. Let me just read through the paragraph again one more time real quick relative to the bullet points. Yeah, no, I, I, I was just going to say like the, the term Intel doesn't necessarily make sense. I think that in the paragraph, you know, it's, it's further information. And we could even add this to the paragraph and like, and legal contacts on children and their families, understanding that there are, are things happening at home that folks in the school, maybe that's not the right wording, but you know, maybe, maybe it's just context um, so that What's key is that there's there's a that there's an open line of communication between the the police and and administration in the school to know that a student may be in um, in jeopardy or in some sort of different you know having to deal with some something at home that could influence um, how they um, you know how the how they yeah. can be a student. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry. Like it's. I'm just trying to like figure out how do we use that language. How, how about providing further domestic context? Is that just too jargony? Is that just weird? 
I, I understand what you're trying to get at, Shay. It could be like information backslash legal con legal context. It's okay to say legal context. I mean, I think yeah. that's yeah, like that's the context that police officers provide. You know. Sure. That's what. Okay, they, I put that. I put that in there. So I think we're going to need more time. What do you think? <laughs> like to go back? Yeah. Yeah. Does everyone want more time? Please. Yeah. Okay. So let's just hop right back into them. And um, I'll give you what? The same amount of time, another five minutes? We'll start there. Yeah. So should, can we, should I go ahead and delete the, or Emma, are you master editor? No, no, you go ahead. Yeah, ditch that stuff. You the, did a great job okay? of summarizing it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, great Maybe job. Thank you. I just realized that last time I left myself unmuted while I was asking my mom to get me a muffin. So I'm sorry, guys. I did not hear that, so. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to like apologize on record for that because like Orca is here. I want my mom to bring me a muffin too, actually. Yeah, I mean, Damn. it's not the worst thing I could have said off mute, yeah. so. Um, the next sent the, the other sections weren't, <clears throat> they just didn't have quite as much not enough for like a paragraph. Um, so I, you know, I did put in a sentence and Jay, I think noted by email that, you know, the memorandum of understanding basically is like a moot document. So maybe it's not helpful to reference it here. I, I think um, so. Like, I feel like we need to just say like, we, we, it carries no weight. When I talked to Chief Pete about it, he's like, I, you know, I asked Tony Fakos, nobody know who wrote it. No, like, who, like nobody knows what context it was written under. So it really carries no weight. So, I mean, if we need to say here that the MOU will be rewritten, then that's what we should say, but we shouldn't reference it in terms of something that should be changed. I think that I, I agree. And I think it can just, this, your sentence can just, we can delete that part and just say the intention of the school resource officer position is, and it would be great mm -hmm. just like that. I don't, you know, the anecdotal evidence is, I'm not sure like it's compelling enough to actually like list here. I was struggling with data or evidence to really support one way or the other, just because of legal reasons that individual stories have to be kept private and Yeah, um, I mean, I guess, I mean, that, like, Libby made a point of including that information in her presentation. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think it's, you know, it's fair to call it anecdotal evidence, and people can, on the board or otherwise, can kind of use their own judgment as to, like, how do you weigh that versus other anecdotal evidence or other data that might be available. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about it. Would it make sense to say anecdotal evidence presented by the superintendent? Th that's just what I was going to say, like anecdotal evidence from the district or from the superintendent. Like we need to, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, giving more it more contact. Yeah, giving it that weight of what the source is, is really important. Yeah, that's presented that's, by the superintendent. Yeah, and that, that's how we heard it. Yeah. Like, that, yeah, I think that that gives it a lot more value as a comment. It's still anecdotal, but knowing the source, not like, oh, I just heard from somebody on the street corner, you know, so yeah. I think that makes sense. Oh, man, we're already being called back. Right. <laughs> So is it okay to delete this, these um, bullet points? 
Yep. Yeah. Above. Let me just check in. Edie, I wasn't on my screen, so I didn't see if Edie was nodding. Was Edie also gave that? Great. Okay. Yeah, I was. Thanks. I can't. I have a small screen. I can't see both things at the same time. Um, yeah, I didn't even write up a sentence for the safety plans one because it was, I feel like it was partially covered. Like up here, it talks about facilitating safety drills. Um, maybe we could just add another thing here, like. Another thing too is that they're gonna still, mm -hmm. the police will still be able to do much of that work without, with an SRO or without an SRO. And I was sure. really struck by the presentation that Laura and Mary did where she uh -huh. talked about an interview that she had with Chief Pete where he said, you know, this should not be a, in a consideration, like, like school shooter scenarios should not be a consideration of why to have an SRO because you can never know if, this, if the SRO will be in that particular building at any particular time, you know, that, so it doesn't feel like a compelling mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. to like, Make yeah, sure. it's, 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 yeah, it's kind of overstating to say that there is immediate protection, especially if the police chief says, well, that's not actually guaranteed, but it's immediate in the sense of the SRO is actually going to be right there in the building. Yeah. Um, do we need to go back? Do people want to go back? How are you feeling? Group two, group three? I was in group two and we were pretty much done, but I do think we a couple more minutes would be nice if other people would like one more session. How's group three feeling? Yeah, some more time would be good, I think. Okay. So we'll just we'll do a slightly shorter just by a couple minutes. We'll shave a couple okay. minutes off. One minute. <laughs> Yeah, and I just want to sure. jump in here too in, in talking to Chief Pete um, is that um, we, we um, being a lot of folks in the city have been hearing from a few, from a couple um, community members. Well, actually, Emma, you probably have as well um, about this specific case and, and this scenario rather, where if there was an active school shooter and, and the, the bottom line for, for the chief, as far as he's concerned is, it's, you know, you can't plan for it because if there's one SRO and we have three buildings, not to mention Roxbury, then it's this, the, the plan that's in place is to activate the SRO and, and the entire police force, not just say, we have somebody, don't worry, we have somebody in the school. So right. it's kind of a non-issue. Um, it's something that's planned for completely otherwise. So we should- It's gonna be, go. we, for, yeah. And like, right, so we just- so I, I mean, I think the question then is, should we delete that entirely or should we have some other version of it where we address that? Because I feel like it's a point that a lot of people might think of or think we are leaving out. So should we address it some other way or should we give it to one of the other groups? Maybe As, it's three, maybe it's a group three thing mm. of like, this isn't really an argument for or against the SRO, but here is something that the group, the committee considered that was brought to the committee's attention that the police chief has been considering that everyone's, you know, people have been talking about and here's what we've found or where we landed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That's a good point, Edie. And I think that that makes sense as a group three where the SRO would be, you know, a primary point of contact in this scenario, but not the sole person responsible for dealing with it, you know? Yeah. I can um, cut it from here and then add a comment um, on group three that just says, group one thinks this belongs in group three <laughs> section. Well, let's just start editing the other group stuff. That'd be good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Yes. laughs> I love that. Um, so I guess while I'm doing that, I did try to, this, the sentence that starts, the relationship um, is an attempt at a summary of the points above. So you can weigh in on whether that works. 
Is it okay if I jump off camera for a minute because my muffin has arrived? That's all right. Thank you. These bottom bullet points. Sorry, what do we need to, the ones that you've highlighted in yellow? Um, uh, my note there, my note there was just that to me it didn't, um, that they didn't really necessarily fit squarely in here. You know, that they weren't strong or compelling enough to include. Or so I'm trying to think. So SRO provides some of the Montpelier. Yeah, you know, like the word some, we talked about that during our breakout the first time. You know, how does that get weighted and do we include it if it's only representative of some people? Yep. So Emma, I've got I've got one thought on that, but we can do it separate, <laughs> just in terms of consolidating all of that down to a little. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the time, it's 7.15. So we have another 15 minutes and I'm starting to feel like um, our time might be better spent to, to do that last part of our agenda, which is decide on work groups and sort of pair up and take on a chunk of this work and get it um, you know, presentation ready for February 3rd. And I'm happy to do that in whatever way you think makes sense. Like, does it make sense for, for me to schedule public, publicly warned meetings? And, um, you know, at this point, we're just consolidating our notes. We're not making any decisions. We're not having any real further discussion about it. It's just a consolidation of notes. So I think it's fine um, to work in pairs to prepare those notes. Um, but if people wanted to work in groups of three or something like that, then I could publicly warn a set of meetings um, whenever it made sense for your group to meet. You know, you could talk and decide on a meeting time and I could write an agenda and warn that meeting because we do have some time before February 3rd. I'm trying to look at the calendar. Not a lot of time, actually. Yeah. <laughs> And the, and the other thing is too, Emma, like we're consolidating those documents, but also we need to think about the slideshow or whatever we're going to do, right? So there's like right. two pieces kind of happening right. at the same time. And potentially three, if then there's a, there's an almost a data entry component in terms of linking resources and studies. Yeah. I mean, I do feel really confident in the, those, that core value work and I would trust any two of you to go back to that and sort of finalize our notes on that. And then in terms of the, um, what we just did, the SRO recommendations, that to me is starting to look really good too when I read through it. Um, and I think, you know, you know, maybe we split that up into two working groups to take two different sections of it. Um, the executive summary I wonder if whoever is willing and interested in writing the executive summary, working on the executive summary, might want to spend five minutes of our time right now to get notes from this committee to work with on that. So I see it as somebody, somebody for core value, you know, the different working groups would be core values, the executive summary. Um, the resource page is, pretty easy and almost complete. Um, the SRO recommendations, which we just did breakout rooms on, linking to key linking to key documents. So Joan, we talked about linking some key documents under each section for the board's easy access and reference. Um, and then more of like the visual element of our presentation. So if that's going to be a PowerPoint or a Prezi or whatever. So that's four working groups, um, core values, executive summary, SRO recommendations, and, and visuals. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. can, 
the one thing I might add to visuals is also like who's gonna say what at the board meeting to go that goes along with the visuals. Yeah, so I wonder if when thinking about these working groups, if we might want to assign people to the working groups based on who is interested in presenting some of that. Does that make sense or not really? Sure. And you did folks fill out that survey for you, Emma, so you have an idea or? Yeah, most people did. I think, um, you know, there definitely was the idea was floated at the last meeting that the students take the lead on the presentation. And I like that idea. It sounded like most of the students were willing to do that. Um, you want to speak, Eliana or Edie, about sort of your willingness to take the lead on February 3rd? Yeah, we um, we spoke about this at our, we had a meeting together. And um, yeah, we think it's really important that we are at the center of the presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that as a team, we were more willing, like if all of us were doing it sort of. And um, I think yeah. that, yeah, what do you think, Edie? Yeah, um, I, what you said, and that we basically, I think the agreement we reached was that like, we are most interested in presenting like ourselves as individuals, our level of interest in presenting is higher if the other two students would also be presenting with us. Like we, we're interested in all presenting like as a package. Yeah. Mm. So I wonder if, um, you know, at, in my brain, the way that I was thinking about it was I was thinking about maybe breaking you up to rep to be on one, one of you be serving on each of these working committees so that you, and then you could take the lead on that section of the presentation. But I wonder if it makes more sense for, you know, maybe you three to do like the executive summary or core values, um, you know, and then you start the presentation and then you sort of introduce each part and then you could assign people to help you with, if you want other people to speak. Any ideas are welcome. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. I feel like, or just as I've collaborated with Edie and Zach, I feel like our strength has come when we were together. So um, I think that I would be interested in going after the core values, um, but yeah, whatever you guys wanna do, I'm at for. Yeah, um, I think we could work as presenters in any form like any idea that gets floated out there, we could conceivably do. Um, but as Eliana said, I think our strength is like when the three of us work together. So like in my mind, um, I, I can see the three of us working on like one of the sections as a team, like if we all took the core values. What about this? What if you start, you kick off the presentation with, uh, with core values and you take that on as a, as a working committee and then throughout the presentation, you could sort of introduce the other sections by grounding it in the core values again, you know, or even like after a section is presented, you could say, and this piece, you know, really, like you could keep coming back to core values throughout the presentation. I think that's great. And that that ties into both what Susan mentioned at the beginning of this with the visual and also like what my idea was with the the like the the quotes that connect to the core values. I feel like that's really cool actually. And like the core values is what is driving this presentation anyway. So like having the students do that, I think would be good. And I don't want to pile your workload too high um, and have you present the, everything. You know, I feel like that might be too ambitious or just a, a lot of work for you. Um, Will? Oh, I'm seeing some chat. I have a thought. Too. Have a thought. This might work yeah. um, in, a, in sort of an equitable workload sort of way. 
if um, what if there were if the three students and, and are working as a group and are taking the lead on the presentation of the material, what if the individual sections, a rough draft of each, if other members of the committee like did a rough draft of the executive summary and then submitted that to the student group um, to be revised, adapted, supplemented to however the three of you wanted to present it. And so the, the, the hashing out of the rough draft of each section then wouldn't fall on, on you, but, but the revision and the presentation of it um, would be, would, that part would be, would suit however you wanted to work as a team. Including if you were like, you know what, I would like to have Will read the executive summary as it's written. And then I would like to have Susan speak to it. You know what I mean? Like you could sort of assign people to different things. Does that feel like too much work though? I just want to be careful to not pile your plates too high. It's we, you have one week before the school board meeting. I feel I like having um, each section drafted by other members of the committee is good. And especially with the executive portion, because that means that everyone in the committee is going to be thinking about it. And it's not just for one like small group to do. And, and I think that, yeah, I think revising it and just condensing it wouldn't be too bad because we'll just have a lot of like probably common themes that come up anyway. Um, but I just, yeah, I don't know if you could just like, like outline what the actual workload would be. Um, then we just think about that first. Yeah, um, I definitely like workload and time is an actual like barrier slash concern mm -hmm. for me kind of at this time, but um, I really like that idea because it also brings us back to the core value of student voice. And, um, you know, the more the students are in charge of revising and or presenting, um, the more powerfully that voice is felt. And like our whole idea to present as the three of us was to present the power of student voice to the board and the public. So I think it's good. Great, okay. So, so let's plan on that. Let's plan on the three of you taking the lead and and being the work group for the core values part? Or did you wanna, or did you just wanna sort of take the lead on the whole thing and have a different working group work on core values, the rough draft? Or did you wanna work on core values? I, before my, my idea was to, um, to, to, to assign to non-students the rough draft, but then that um, all of the rough drafts but that all final decisions um, in terms of revising those rough drafts, adding to them, cutting them down, summarizing them would be, would be made by the students. Um, and so the sort of final say and final authority on each, on each section would be the students without the burden of having to make that rough draft exist for any of them. Um, that, was, that was how I thought of it, but I don't know. Mia? I do I know this is going to add a layer of, uh, but if that, if we're, if we're talking about that, like a final draft that's going to be sent to the board, that deadline is actually more like this Friday, where if it's, it's like the final draft that is the presentation that's happening on Wednesday, that final, that deadline's more like Tuesday or Wednesday morning. So I just want to be a, like, bring that in because yeah, it could be true. that then what happens is like, I, could, I could, could volunteer to clean up what we've done on the core values here and make it ready to share in electronically with the board and the students then take it and make it into the, this is how we will be presenting it visually and verbally at the board meeting would be one way of handling that, managing that, doing that time management yeah. and workload management. 
Yeah, great point. I wasn't thinking about the board packet deadline. Um, Zach wrote into the chat, I really like the idea. I do have to hop off right at 7.30, but the idea of revising rough drafts submitted to us sounds good to me. So can I get some volunteers on who would be interested in doing the rough draft versions of core values? So there's core values, executive summary, um, SRO recommendations, and then do we want to leave visuals to the students because you're going to be creating the presentation? Does that I was going to offer to work with the students on the presentation and maybe like a run through or something like that. So I, I'm happy if, if they'd have me, I'd, um, I'd be happy to work with them on sort of putting together that part of it. I don't know if you guys need help. Maybe you don't. <laughs> No, I think that would be good as as a teacher who has been to several presentations and knows like what's a good one and what's not like I think that would be really helpful. I also didn't mean to take the core values rough drafting away from you guys if you really wanted to keep that part. No, that's fine. I think that like um, going over the rough drafts and revising each one of each piece will help our presentation of the core values because we'll have seen everything that's been going on so we're not like only focusing on core values and like yeah yes i think that anyway i'm done well and i also think some of this like if we're going to be grabbing quotes from the feedback like some of that might have to happen might like everyone can sort of chip in on that that piece of it pulling quotes from the feedback document mm -hmm. um okay so Susan has volunteered to do the visuals. Did I hear that um, Mia volunteered to do the core values? Did I hear that? Sure, if, yeah. Um, executive summary. Yay. I think you are a writer, right? Is that true? That, that, that's true, yeah. Yeah, it seems pretty clear. <laughs> um, and then the SRO recommendations. And, I, and I'm, I want everyone to volunteer for everything, but we're just going through making sure we have one person for each thing right now. So we'll, we'll stack your team with more people. The SRO recommendations. So the document that we just were working on. Um, if that's mostly a matter of, so I can't actually be at the February 3rd meeting to help present, but if um, if that is mostly a matter of doing a read through and some final like editing, I can at least do that part or work with someone else. And I'd offer to do that with Joan too. I think that that would make sense to have a couple sets of eyes on that if Joan's okay with that. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, and I will um, make sure that our resource page is is complete. Um. So, who uh, is Kat? Did Kat is Catherine still here? I'm, I am here. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I had to flip to my phone because my internet went out. I don't know. Um, my computer was acting crazy. Catherine, do I, you? I, I'm like a good proofreader. Revision. You want to work with the executive summary with Will on the executive summary? Sure. And so, Mia, that leaves you alone with core values. <laughs> well, um, I mean, we've got other members of the committee who just aren't here tonight, so. Yeah, so there's Amanda. They can be voluntold. <laughs> ah, I like that. I'm somebody. gonna use that one. So Amanda, we've got um, Jen, Pierre. Um, my brain isn't functioning 100%. Who else is missing? Amanda, Jen, and Pierre. I think that might be it. So I could reach out to Amanda and see any of them and see if they want help. I also think it's gonna, it's, we're pretty close. So there's not I a ton too. of work to, to do on core values. But we also wanna give them an opportunity to weigh in on them if they, uh, if they have something to add or revise. So yeah. when do we want to get these rough drafts into the hands of the students? One second, it sounded like Catherine had a question. Oh, sorry. 
Oh, I was just going to say, is there a way for us to all see what is going to go before the board? Just so we're all, we just all know. Yeah. What I'll plan to do is just, um, you know, each of you who has taken on summarizing, once we are going to be, I think we're going to need to send them to the students. Should we try to have them sent to the committee by Thursday and then sent out to the board packet Friday? So you'll have one day, 24 hours to look at them and make sure there's something that you really have a problem with. D does that feel like a manageable timeline for people to have their work ready by Thursday for the rest of the committee to look at? Okay. End so of the day Thursday, right? End of the day? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Four o'clock? <laughs> um, so maybe if everyone could email me their document and then I can um, put it all together into one email out to the committee Thursday evening. Um, and then Friday, eve we'll wait until Friday evening. I mean, I think Anna, Anna can add something to the board packet a little bit later, but it's just, um, so we can take our time a little bit with that, but it's just better for the board to have enough time to really sit with this stuff, you know, if they have questions, have time to review it. So rough drafts by Thursday at four, I will email out Thursday evening after four. Um, yes, okay, so warn a public meeting for Susan and the students. When would you like to do that? Do you wanna, should we, should we adjourn and then talk about a time for you to meet? I know Zach has to hop off. Um, yeah. It's already five minutes past the hopping that's off some, time. That's something you're allowed to do over email, even if it's a big chunk of you, is to deal with logistics like that, just to, you know, you're not violating open meeting law. But yes, I can, I can warn a meeting. You need 48 hours to warn a meeting. So um, if you wanted to meet Friday, I would have to warn it tomorrow morning. Do you guys want to just stay on for a couple of minutes and figure out the best we can and then we can check in with Zach? Um, I'm still here. Um, I can figure it out really quick. Okay, yeah, so let's stay on after we adjourn. Um, you know, for as for as little time as we have to sort of get our footing under us for this February 3rd presentation, I do feel confident, like I was talking to someone the other day just about the incredible people on this committee. And I feel like it's just a trust fall into the committee. And like, I, I believe that this is gonna come together in a way that's really wonderful. Um, and just reading the work that's already there in rough, rough, rough draft form, you know, I think it's going to be great. So I have full confidence in it. And I think it's, we're going to be giving the board lots of information that will be helpful for them to make a decision. So I really appreciate it. And um, we do, do we want to plan another thing uh, before the meeting on February 3rd, we could warn a meeting of the committee just to sort of get our wits about us even just like a half an hour before the meeting. Is Emma, I was thinking that might be a good idea because like if questions are are given like who who might be logical to respond like where the question would land. So I like that idea. Okay. And then the student the students I'm guessing you will reach out to any of us um, if you want our help in actually presenting. For February 3rd. Does that sound good? And I can provide you with the email addresses of everybody. Okay. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited for what happens. And I'm so excited that the students are um, taking the lead. So thank you, Eliana. Yes, thank you. I think it's going to be incredible. I'm really. You rock. Great to see what you do. Can I just mention one more thing? Um, at the previous, I had a meeting with Edie and Zach and we are gonna be sending out another survey for the students. So we're gonna have more data 
um, for whoever is going to be processing that. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up. We're going to get it out um, tomorrow, hopefully, but that will be an important part to have in the presentation. So that would be Joan and Jay, um, right? It's under the SRO recommendations. There's going to be links to key documents, but also under core values, the quotes. Okay. All right. So do I have do I have a motion to adjourn and then the students and Susan can stay back and we'll schedule a meeting for you? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay. Um, Jay. <laughs> Aye. Joan? Aye. Will? Aye. Susan? Aye. Mia? Aye. Eliana? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Zach? Aye. And is there anyone else I'm forgetting with cameras off? I think we're good. Okay. Oh, wait, me. I oh. <laughs> thank you. Edie. Okay, so uh, meeting adjourned. And we will, I'm going to warn a meeting for a half an hour prior to the February 3rd meeting. So six o'clock on February 3rd, be prepared um, to come to that. And um, the students should know, I think Joan can't make it to February 3rd, but was willing to volunteer to do a recording thing if you, you know, if you want a recorded presentation or piece of it to be recorded by her. She was willing to do that. Okay. Thanks everybody. Good night. All right. So um I don't know if you can hear me. Um we can't okay, okay great. Yes we can. Um the mic wasn't turning green or whatever. Um, <laughs> the only times that, I mean, there's probably something specifically, but as a general like thing, the only times that work for me are anytime Friday after 12, this Friday, 29th. Unfortunately for me, it's the opposite because I have an afternoon class, so I'm only around in the morning. Um, and I have mm. like a ski race on Friday too. Um, hmm. Yeah, you guys, I can't, I'm, I'm working all day Friday as well. So I'm, right. unfortunately that complicates it a little bit in the evening. I don't know, like if we could do like a five o'clock. I know it's not the best on a Friday night, but um, would that possibly work? I believe I could do five o'clock on Friday. I know that I can't, I don't know. Um, what time I'm gonna get back from the race, but like I, it it won't be at five. I would I would say like seven at the earliest, which okay. kind of sucks. But. <laughs> um, what about that Thursday at five? How does that look? I also have a race that day, which like really sucks too, but. Um, yeah, for me, it's just like, I, it has to be kind of late in the evening. Do you have uh, afternoon classes Thursday too? Uh, yes. Okay. Would Thursday late evening work better or Friday late evening? I mean, when they're saying like seven, like would one of those work better for you, Eliana? Um, I have to look at my email one second. And it could be that you started at seven and if Eliana doesn't get there until 7.15 or 7.20, you know, you could yeah. get started. Was that a yeah, that Friday would work at seven or you're still checking? Oh, I'm still checking, sorry. Um, is that um, cross country ski racing? Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, Friday. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, I think that seven o'clock should be fine. And if, yeah, if I come at 7.15 or something, I think that would be okay. And is Friday better than Thursday? Um, Actually, yes. you know what? I think we kind of have to do Friday because- Oh, no, wait, Friday's totally fine. The race was rescheduled for Thursday and I have it on Saturday. So Friday is totally fine. So Friday at five would actually work? Um, yes, I think so. Friday at 5.30 would be better because I have practice instead. Sorry, it's so- okay. <laughs> But that's good because the You're documents good. actually don't think will be done on Thursday. People are, so Friday 5.30 works perfect for me. Okay. It sounded like it worked for you, Edie. Yeah, and um, if we're still like bringing in feedback from the survey we send out at that point, uh, we can just add it with our own edits. Mm -hmm. um, because like we might still be receiving stuff like down to the wire. Emma, does that mean that Anna sets up the, the Zoom as well? If she warns Yeah, her? I'm gonna um, ask if she can add, add you as a host so that you can actually initiate the Zoom meeting. Do you okay. have a Zoom account? Or is it like Google? <laughs> Meet you guys use Google Meet within the district, right? We use Google Meet, yeah. And so I could set yeah. it up as a Google Meet. I actually think that might be a good way to present to the board too. Well, I don't know what. Yeah, the board Google Meet's nice. What does the board use? The board always uses Zoom. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. We'll figure it out. Um, so I'll email Anna about that and let her set up. Um, I'm I'm going to make a very simple agenda because there's really it's just going to be like discussion about presentation, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And I will warn it for two hours, so probably won't. Hope, hopefully, you won't be on for full two hours. <laughs> and um, then, if, yeah. if we need to meet in pairs, like let's say a couple of us want to kind of finish the slideshow or something like that, that's okay, right? Yes. We don't have to warn that. So maybe Yeah, and I think like what, what Mia was saying towards the end about open meeting law, it's like if you're not talking about substantive um, board, you know, committee decisions and you're not trying to build consensus and talk about, you know, like this is this is um, clerical, like administrative stuff, it's um, less, you know, like you're you're not really violating open meeting law if you're talking about that kind of stuff outside of the meeting. So I think we're safe, but I'm going to email Anna um, and have her hopefully set up. I could start a Zoom link for you at five o'clock on Friday, but um, it's been challenging in the past. I've had this happen with Anna before too. Like, I think she always sets it up and then if you set it up, then we get two and then it's confusing. So let's just let her set it up. I'm going to let her <laughs> set it up and I'm going to hopefully have her ha designate one of you as the person who can actually start the meeting. Sounds um, good. And then she'll be in touch Sounds with you. good. Okay. Thanks for hanging on, Zach <laughs> and everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, Eliana, so... Um, about working on our questions tonight. Mm -hmm. um, is that doc already shared with us? Yeah, I shared it with you guys like right I'm after our meeting. I have, I've written an intro and mm. a sample question, but I, I thought like people would work on it, but um, that didn't happen. So that's okay. We can just do it now, but um, then we can just send them out. Yeah, so should we like do that right now? Uh, how about in like 10 minutes? I just need to like move my legs. All right, that's good yeah, idea. I have to go <laughs> really badly. Um, okay. yeah, thank you. Okay, bye, Zach. Bye, so, Zach. Uh, so I'll end this meeting. You guys are talking about working on it outside of the meeting, right? Yes, okay, <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. Thank you. Bye. bye.